So I think I'm back in my fantasy era. At the beginning of the year, I was in a really big fantasy era, which is unusual for me because usually I read a lot of romance, but I feel like this year I'm really branching out, which is so fun. And at the beginning of the year, I read Throne of Glass and that series was such a masterpiece and I've been searching for that feeling ever since. And I'm sad that I'll never be able to read that series for the first time again. <laughs> but I have come across another fantasy book and I feel like it's going to be a five-star read. I'm currently reading Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. And immediately I was like, is this going to be a five-star read? I feel like I am so enchanted with this story so quickly, which is so weird because... Usually with fantasy, it takes a while to like really get into it, but this book just immediately grabbed my attention and I don't know, I just felt like I needed to do a reading vlog for this. I needed to document this journey. <laughs> so this follows the story of Evangeline Fox and Evangeline has always believed in true love and happily ever after. That is, until the man that she loves is engaged to be married to another. So Evangeline is desperate to stop this wedding and she makes a bargain with the immortal Prince of Hearts. But she soon discovers that bargaining with the Prince of Hearts is a very dangerous game. He has plans for Evangeline. Plans that will either end in the greatest happily ever after or the most exquisite tragedy. I've also heard that the second book is very much like the Taylor Swift 1989 album. So I'm really interested to read the second book as well. So we'll probably read that together in this vlog too. So yeah, let's go to Starbucks and do some reading. called the magnificent wow can't talk <laughs> the magnificent north and i've been using the first three colors of these page tabs to match the cover of the book so we have like a rose gold theme going on to match the cover <laughs> place called Magnificent North and there are these little tiny dragons that are like the size of chipmunks and they just roam around this place and it says that they are as common as squirrels and <laughs> I just think that is so cute look at that so small if i lived in this fantasy world i would absolutely have a pet dragon i just got to part three so part three is called chaos and it's definitely very chaotic right now <laughs> something really big just happened and i have no idea what's gonna happen next and at around the 50 percent mark you get this really big piece of information but other than that I really have so many questions <laughs> and also the Prince of Hearts, his name is Jax. Jax is still such a mystery to me. I just find him so interesting. I think he has a lot of layers to him. I think there's definitely a lot more than meets the eye. So I'm about to go to my parents' house because I am cat sitting. So I'm gonna bring my book with me and hopefully I'll finish part three 
And so I'm thinking, I'm feeling a little ambitious. So hopefully I will also start the second book. So I just got the second book on my Kindle from the library. This is The Ballad of Never After. And I've heard that the ending is really crazy. So I don't know if I'm emotionally prepared for that. And the third book doesn't come out until October. So <laughs> I don't know. We'll see how it goes. to you guys so in those two days I have done so much reading I finished the first book and was this the five star read that I predicted it would be yes <laughs> this had me captivated from the very first page to the very last page this was magical and whimsical and mysterious it was everything that I could ever ask for in a fantasy novel. So I think the last time I talked to you guys, I was on part two. And in part three, there is just so many twists and turns and you think you know one thing and then it actually turns out to be another thing. And with Jax, he is still such a mystery. And I, like part of me really wishes that I could get Jack's point of view. But then also I feel like the mystery and intrigue of Jack's character is a big reason why this story is so good because it really just keeps you turning the page because you're just like, who is Jax? Like, who is he really under this like tough exterior? And he just puts up so many walls and you know, like you can sense that he has some humanity, but he just never shows it. And so he's still very much a mystery at the end of book one. And then once I finished book one, I just immediately wanted to go into the second book. So I'm actually 87% through the second book. I just pretty much read all day yesterday and I've been switching back and forth between my Kindle and the audiobook and there's this quote in the second book that I feel like kind of sums up who Jax is and it says he casually slid into the seat beside her and turned to her with a wolfish grin it was a smile like a fairy tale part villain part hero part impossible ever after so I feel like that really sums up like who he is because you kind of get this feeling that he's not exactly a good guy but he's not exactly a bad guy and well sometimes he is <laughs> but, okay he's he's morally gray but but you do you just get the sense that there's there's more to his story and he isn't all bad so <laughs> also there is this really cozy inn called the hollow and those chapters were like my favorite chapters because they were just so fairy tale like and the inn is described as the rooftop was covered in enormous cheery mushrooms with red caps that had tiny dragons dozing upon them then there were the flowers so large they were the size of small children with bright colored petals in every shade which seemed to perk up as the two of them arrived and uh, i just I want to live at the hollow <laughs> and it's just a, a really special place and 
there's also this small dragon that wants to like come inside the hollow and be there with Evangeline and I wanted so badly for Evangeline to keep this dragon as a pet but I was so sad that the dragon ended up just leaving so but I'm such a sucker for like a pet dragon in a fantasy story you know there's Hagrid who loves Norbert and in Throne of Glass there's um a Braxos and he is the sweetest cinnamon roll dragon in the world there's no dragon quite like him so I was hoping there'd be some sort of dragon character in the story but anyway <laughs> so I have about an hour left of the audiobook and I really wanted to document like the final chapters of the Ballad of Never After because so many people have messaged me and they said you know prepare yourself for the ending and I have no idea what that means like prepare for what I don't know so I just really wanted to document um, the ending so here we go So I listened to most of the end of the audiobook while I was on my walk, but I'm going to switch over to the ebook and I have five minutes left of the book. Um, so let's do this. I'm so nervous. <laughs> That did not just happen. Okay, now I see why everyone said prepare yourself for the ending because what an ending. <laughs> yeah, um, I feel betrayed. <laughs> I feel like um, I can't even process what just happened. Like it was a major twist and a major cliffhanger and now I have to wait until October for the next book <laughs> and I'm not okay. <laughs> but overall, I would give it five stars. I loved the first book, but I think I loved the second book even more. If I were to describe this series in Taylor Swift songs, I would pick The Archer, Wonderland, and I Know Places. But yeah, so I wish I could say more, but if you've read the book, you know what I just went through. <laughs> so let me know in the comments down below what your favorite fantasy books are because I definitely want to read more fantasy. And yeah, thanks for joining me on my reading journey and I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.